Good morning. I know the last time that we were together, I said I was going to continue on our discussion, but that takes a little more time than I have this morning. So we'll do that this afternoon, so come back. But right now, I would like to talk about five herbs that are effective in working with respiratory distress and uh, eliminating mucus. So the first herb, we pretty much all know eucalyptus. Eucalyptus has cineol that makes it a good expectorant. Whorehound is another one that is used very often in cough drops and other things that we buy commercially. And it's in the mint family. It is also an expectorant herb, so it loosens the bronchial secretions and helps your body to eliminate the mucus. Then there is a root that is often used uh, by Native Americans and it's called osha root. Now osha root increases the blood circulation to the lungs and it also helps to fight sore throat, bronchitis, cough, and the flu. So again, uh, we've got ginseng. That's another very common herb. Now it is illegal <laughs> to um, harvest ginseng prematurely because people will destroy the plant to get to the root. But ginseng fights inflammation and it is a potent antioxidant. Um, and it's also an immune booster. So ginseng is all, often used for eczema, and that's one of its proven benefits. And finally, we've got mullein, which is good for cough, asthma. It's also an expectorant, so it's loosening up those mucal secretions. And it makes your cough more productive. Now, there are lots of different ways that you can use these. Some of these come as capsules. Some of them are used as teas. Um, but whatever way you use it, it's always for your health. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise and honor this morning. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The song says you are worthy. You are worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You get the highest praise. You get the highest Hallelujah. praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are holy. You are holy. That's why, Lord. Lord, we exalt your name. Come on, let's name. try that again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are worthy. You are worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You get. You get the highest Hallelujah. praise. Hallelujah. You are holy. You are holy. Lord, we. Lord, we exalt your And this is why, because. For you have
children seek after you and we love you this morning we're glad yes we are glad hallelujah thank you God thank you Lord we love you this morning for being our protector our strong tower our way maker our redeemer everything that we need we love you Lord we lift our hands and we bless you we cry before you, Lord, that you are holy and you're righteous, that you are set apart, you are high and lifted up. There is none like you in all the earth. We thank you, God, for being our very present help in our time of storm, our light in the midst of darkness. That's what you are to us. Come on, no matter where you are, I want you to join us right here. Help us sing. You are my way maker miracle Come on, help us. a promise keeper light in the darkness my god rock way maker miracle worker promise keeper light in the darkness my god that is who you are come on let's sing it together you are here Turning lives around this morning. Turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. You are here. Mending every heart. Yes, you Mending are. Every Sing it again. Light in the 
you are here you are here turning lives around turning lives around that's why we worship you i worship you hallelujah i worship you you are here mending every heart you are here thank you jesus mending every heart that's why we worship you we worship you. i worship you i worship you i worship you come on you are here you are here you are here he's there with you even at your home no matter where you are he's with you in every problem, turning your life around. It's okay to worship him because he's God and he's God all by himself. He has all power in his hands. He speaks and it's done. We just have to believe. He will mend your heart. He will see you through. That's why we let's bow our heads as we pray this morning. God, we bless you this morning for your presence that's always with us. We bless you this morning because you're God and you're God all by yourself. Lord, we love you this morning because you've never given up on us. You've always made a way for us. Even when we doubted, even when we had fears, God, you still provided for us. You still made a way. You are the great way maker. You are the promise keeper. You are the miracle worker. God, all power is in your hands. You speak and things are done, Lord. You can do anything. We bless you because we understand that you are our God. And we lift you up, Lord, because we are your children. We have the faith to believe in you, to trust in you, to put our hope in you. Because you can and you will bring us through. We thank you, Lord, because Everything that you've done has been for our good. Every way that you've made has been for our good. Sometimes we don't understand it. Sometimes we can't really figure it out. We throw up our faith and our trust in you. Our hope is in you. Every problem that we have, every trial that's amongst us right now, Lord, the sicknesses that we're feeling in our bodies, the financial burdens that we're facing, the things that we just can't control, we surrender and turn them over to you this morning. The great way maker, the great promise keeper, our light in the midst of darkness. We will follow you and we will trust in you. God, there are those that are watching online, those that are here with us. You understand and you know how to see us through. We pray for peace this morning. We pray for joy this morning. We pray for only the joy that you can provide. Lord, you can do it. And we are here asking for it, that you bless us with your spirit. That you bless us, God, but we need you to fill us up and restore us. So we surrender our lives to you. Our wills are yours, Lord. We surrender our will so that your will can be done, so that your way can take place. God, have your way even in this service this morning as we go forward in praise and worship as the word is spoken, as songs are lifted up and the word is given. God, draw us close to you. Pierce our hearts. Help us to grow. Help us to understand how important it is to put our trust and hope in you. God, we love you this morning and we honor you. You are worthy of every prayer. So we give it to you. Thank you this morning. Thank you this morning, because we didn't have to be here. We didn't have to be here in this moment, but you saw fit to wake us up. You saw fit to start us on our way. You saw fit to bring us forth to this very time for this moment. So we expect and know that a miracle will take place in our lives, that a blessing will come forward, and we love you. Let everyone say amen and amen. no time for our tithe and offerings uh, even though you're at home I know sometimes you wonder how can this be done 
it can be done simply, but before we get to how it can be done, I want you to understand that that can be done in ways that only God can help us with. And so as we come together, partnership that you have with God, we sustain what's going on here physically as well as provide spiritually. And so your weekly contributions help us in this feat. And so I want to remind you that we're asking for individuals to continue to set aside $25 a week, $100 per month as a sacrificial giving so that we can continue to maintain and obtain the things that we are in need of. And so as we partner together, I'm pretty sure and I know for a fact that God will bless indeed. And as he blesses, he will give us all that we need. And so there are four ways you can do it. First way is through our cash app, which is simply dollar sign, capital N, capital C, capital S, capital D, capital A. You can also go to our website or go to Adventist Online Giving, put New Covenant Church and put in your generous contribution. You can mail it in. P.O. Box 901-347, Memphis, Tennessee, 38190. Or you can bring it to the church. Uh, services get done no later than 1.30 Central Standard Time here. And so we want to thank you in advance for what you will do, what you are doing, and what you will continue to do. And again, once you do your tithe, our Treasury Department is asking that everything will go towards combined budget so then we can deviate where it needs to go from there. So we thank you again and as we pray together just know that it is noted in heaven your faithfulness. Father we thank you uh, for the crumbs we give. We thank you for the, the coins we give. We thank you for the dollars we give and the checks we write. We thank you Lord just for giving us the ability to give. For those who watch and, and for those who have indeed, Lord, benefited from what we do here. We ask, Lord, that you continue to allow them to be faithful. Help our church, Lord, to be faithful in its doings around this church and for this community. Bless us, Lord. Bless those who have given today, those who will give this month. Bless those, Lord, who want to give but don't have the means to give. And bless those, Lord, who want to give more. So thank you in advance and help us to have this three-way partnership with you, the church, and ourselves. In Jesus' name, amen.
His love. Father, your kiss. Your kiss. Your grace to me. Your grace to me. Father, is deeper than. Is deeper than my soul can see. Come on, if you know my purpose, it changed. My Oh yes, it changed when I got down on my when knees I and I began to call your name. How your name? That's why I give you my life. I give you my love. I give my all. Oh, my past, my past has been erased with just one touch.
Father. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, in your name, we give you our all today. Sometimes, Lord, we forget what all you've done, how you've done it, and why you've done it. We get caught up in ourselves and we lose sight of the Savior. And so, Lord, thank you for the reminder, even in a song. Thank you, Lord, for helping us. As we open your word, we pray, Lord, for your insight, the application, the understanding, and all that we need. Holy Spirit, bless the words. Touch the hearers and come close to the deserters. When it's all said and done, Lord, we just want to please you. In Jesus' name, amen. Our subject is a, before I say that, Mama, I know you, you're looking. We're going to replay the video. We had some technical difficulties. So at the end, we're going to replay the video. Our subject today is a simple subject. It's a subject that I know most of us can be in tune with, but our subject is spiritual trash talk. Spiritual trash talk. Black folks, we specialize in certain things in life from a cultural standpoint. I don't believe there's anybody who can sing like us. I thought somebody would say amen. I don't think there's anybody who can dance like us. I don't know if anybody who can perform in athletics like us. Even when it comes to entertainment. But there's one thing that we don't talk much about that we do so regularly, and that's trash talk. You get a group of men together, and you'll hear some trash talk, perhaps half the night away. Women talk trash too. Don't, don't let me not, uh, they may not talk it like we do, but they do talk some trash. Coming to New Covenant, I met a whole lot of men that trash talk, especially among the elders. I, I, I've said this story before, and I'll say it again. Every pastor that's come to New Covenant, the elders have taken them out to bowl, and, and the pastor did all this talking and came up short each and every time. So they figured this boy from Chicago who made his way through Detroit was going to be the same way. Don't know anything if I'm athletic or not because most pastors, unfortunately, are not athletic. Shame on them. But this one is. And so as, and I'll call their names, as Elder James Elmore and Elder Ben Hurd began talking. Clint Davis in the background. Elder George Davis, and even, even, even Elder Larry Dandridge. They were all talking something special. And I believe Elder Thomas Coleman got his time in there as well, but not as much. But I do remember a lot of trash talking, and I just smiled and talking a little trash. And, and our first game, we started our bowling on our back-to-school special a couple of years ago. I threw the first strike. The second strike, the third strike, it started to get silent in the house. Now, Elder Elmore is the top bowler, and he talks the most. Needless to say, this pastor here won the first game. Now, they'll tell you the, the, the next two games, I didn't, I didn't come in first place, but that wasn't my goal. My goal was to win the first game, and the first game was accomplished. And so now I can talk all the trash when it comes to bowling. Anybody who knows me, I am 5'9", and I talk a lot of trash. I talk a whole lot of trash at any given time. I don't care if I'm playing spades. I don't care if I'm playing Uno. I don't care if I'm playing Monopoly. I'm going to talk trash. I don't care if I'm in the church. I don't care where I'm going to talk trash. 
You hear me? Now, I can't sing to save my life, so I ain't going to talk trash about something I can't do. I'm going to talk trash. Why? That's all embedded in me. My brother, my brother came over yesterday. My brother Dwight came up from Chicago, came down from Chicago, or came down to, from Chicago. He was talking trash. My mother last night, we all were talking trash. My son talked trash. I think my son CJ talked so much trash at Oakwood, he almost got into a fight with some boys from, uh, from Pine Forest. He was talking trash. Talking trash is just what we do. Talking trash is how it is. Now, my, my wife is an introvert, but she's very competitive. When I, we first got together, she didn't talk trash. Now she talks trash, too. She talks trash in her own special way, but she talks trash. Listen, I like a woman that talk trash. And when you talk trash, that means you got to bring it. Don't let me go bowling. Don't let me do something I enjoy. I will talk trash. I remember when I first came to the, into, the, into the Adventist basketball circle, and we were playing in Grand Rapids with the uh, Christian Fellowship League, and our team made it to the playoff, and I was talking trash to some teams from Chicago. Now, I had some players with me, and, and we played the ball, played, played well, and, and, and I talked so much trash, these Christian brothers said, you better not come in the locker room that night. See, when my wife and children are audience, I'm going to talk a whole lot of trash. And I'm going to back it up. All right? You can't talk trash and not back it up, Aaron. You can't do that. Now, if you talk trash, can't back it up. You, you in trouble. So my partners talk trash. Alex Fitzpatrick, he talks trash. Dave Smith, he talks trash. Grady, he talks. Everybody around me tends to talk trash. My grandbaby's going to talk trash. I'm going to teach him how to talk trash. But here's what's interesting. I'm going to teach him how to talk that trash. Listen to me now. I don't care what you say. Listen, let me tell you this. And let me just give you understanding. Here's talking trash defined, right? And I can go to the Urban Dictionary. But trash defined is this. It's boastful comments between opponents trying to intimidate each other. That's all it is, right? Now, understand this. You may not know this, but trash talking legend has it that it started in 1963 with one of the most fat, famous trash talkers to ever live, Elder Powell. You're going to know who I'm talking about. His name is who? Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali would talk so much trash, his opponents would be so upset. <clears throat> Excuse me. Muhammad Ali in, in 1963, check this out, fellas. He made an album called, uh, he made an album of trash talk called I Am the Greatest. That brother got an album called Trash, it's, it's all trash talk. So, so here's what you got to understand. Today, trash talk is part of the language. As many athletes do it, <clears throat> excuse me, Michael Jordan was a big trash talker. Reggie Miller was a big trash talker. Larry Bird was a trash talker. Listen to me now. Folk trash talk. Listen, a lot of athletes do it. Families participate in it. Couples and even children. And here's what's interesting. I want to give you all that. Here's a fact check for you. There was an article. There was a study done by the BBC called, called Work Life in October of 2019. Check this out. This is what they found. They found that trash talk can, can make people more motivated in competitive situations. It, the, the article also said, if deployed correct, carefully. Now, you know, we didn't write that. If deployed carefully. Listen to me now. If deployed carefully, trash talk will give you the upper hand in certain situations. Trash talk. If you do it right, memory, it'll give you an upper hand in certain situations. All right? Now, what does that have to do with, with spiritually? Well, I'm going to take you there. If we go to 1 Samuel chapter 30, and we're going to stay there for the, for the remain of, of today. All right? Understand this. The devil always trash talks. Why do you think you get so discouraged? Why do you think you get so down and out? Because the devil trash talks. He tells you what you're not. He tells you what you can't be. He tells you what you're not going to be. He tells you who you're not connected to. And that's why we find ourselves getting down and out. See, when you're the, on the opposite of being trash talk, there are two things that happen, or with maybe three. Either you're ready to fight, either you're ready to play a little harder, or you're ready to give up. See, when the devil trash talks us, we get we ready to give up. That's why we look so blue and down and discouraged and down and out, because the devil done got it all in our head. The whole purpose of trash talk, Marlon, is to get in somebody's head. That's the whole purpose of it. Once you get in their head, you got them. 
then you can do whatever you want, when you want, how you want to do it. All you got to do is some trash talk. Listen, Dennis Rodman used to do all sorts of crazy things to get in the head of players. Kiss him on the cheek, hit him on the butt, say something crazy in their ear. he do all sorts of things to gain an advantage. So what does the enemy do? He trash talk us. And instead of us trash talking back, we tend to what? Give in by, oh, I guess I'm not. I guess I can't. And so he keeps us from singing. He keeps us from preaching. He keeps us from playing. He keeps us from doing. He keeps us from living because he's trying to get in by trash talking. When things don't go right, he's trash talking. When things go haywire, he's trash talking. And you got to be able to what? Talk that trash back. See, when I was a little boy, I used to watch my brother and them play baseball. And I watched them trash talk all the time. So I had to try to perfect my trash talking. But listen, if you can't bring it, you can't say it. Listen to me now. So you can't trash talk the devil if you're not going to back it. You're going to be with me in a minute. I'm going to take you there. So, so listen. So in 1 Samuel chapter 29, let me give you the backdrop of what's going on here. David, listen to me now. David is currently living amongst the enemy, which is the Philistines. All right. And as he's living amongst the Philistines, understand this. David, they decide, the Philistines decide that it's time for David to return home. Let's look at 1 Samuel chapter 29, verse 3 to 6. 1 Samuel chapter 29, verse 3 to 6. The Bible says it's 1 Samuel chapter 29, verse 3 to 6. 1 Samuel chapter 29, verse 3 to 6. The Bible says this. Then the princes of the Philistines says, what are these Hebrews doing here? And Achish said to the princes of the Philistines, is, not, is this not David, the servant of Saul, king of Israel, who has been with me these days or these years. And to this day, I have found no fault in him since he defected to me. But the princess, verse 4 said, of Philistines were angry with him. So the princesses of the princes of the Philistines said to him, make this fellow return that he may go back to the place which you have appointed for him and do not let him go down with us to battle, least in the battle he become our adversary. For with what could he reconciled himself to his master, if not with the heads of these men. Is not this David, verse 5, of whom they sang one another in dances, saying, Saul has slain his thousand, David his ten thousand. Six says, then Achish called David and said to him, surely as the Lord lives, you have been upright and you're going out and you're coming in with me and the army is good in my sight. For to this day I have not found evil in you since you since the day of your coming to me, nevertheless, the Lord's do not favor you. So in, so in other words, David, it's time, for you to, it's time for you to make way. It's time for you to get up out of here. All right? Understand this in the preceding verses. David does not want to leave the Philistines. Understand David is living among the enemy, and David is comfortable living with the enemy. When the church leaders tried to kill him, David fled to the enemy. It's amazing how our people at times are more comfortable being on the outside than the inside. It's amazing that people tend to treat us better who are on the outside than what? On the inside. So David did not want to leave, right? And understand this. So David returns home in 1 Samuel chapter 30, looking at verse 3 and 4. David's family is captured along with others, and the city is torn and burned and has been invaded by the enemy. How do I know? Look at verse 3. The Bible says this. So David and his men came to the city, and there it was, burned with fire. Their wives, their sons, and their daughters had been taken captive. Verse 4 said, Then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept while they had no more power to eat. So, so not only do you leave where you're not wanted, but then you get back, to the, back home and everything around you is what? In disaster. Your children, your wives, everything has been taken captive. The city is burned down. And the Bible says that these men were what? Weeping. And the Bible says, look at it in verse, in verse 4 again. It says, that then David said, and the people who were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. Listen, that's a lot of crying when you can't cry no more. 
That's a lot of crying when nothing else can come out. It tells you, it gives you indication of how hard they were crying, of how this thing devastated them, how they bothered them. Can you imagine being away and when you get back, everything that you have is destroyed, is gone? Everything that's valuable to you, everything that means something to you has been destroyed? Then check it out in verse 5. In verse 5, verse 5 says, And David's two wives, man, I messed messed that word up, and Hanom, the Jezreite, and Abigail, the widow of Nabal, Nabal, excuse me, the Carmelite, had been taken captive. Now David, verse 6, was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him, because the soul of the people was very grieved, every man for his sons and daughters. So listen to me now. David, number one, is a wanted person. And because he's a wanted person, he's already living on the run. Not only is he living on the run, but David leaves a place that was comfortable to him. As he leaves this place that was comfortable to him, he gets back to a city where it's burnt down, his wives are gone. And not only that, his children are gone. And not only that, the men who are with him say, I want to kill you. They said, we want to kill you. So, so in the midst of this, understand this. So, 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 so David, what should he be like? What is his head like? David could, at this point, give up. David could, at this point, be discouraged. David could, at this point, like talking with someone. David, at this point, could Please be. De- let me know if I can reach out to anyone for you. David, at this point, could be discouraged. <laughs> I guess I didn't told. I didn't say some serious thing. I'm about to lose it. They trying to call a suicide hotline for me. Mercy, let me turn her down. <laughs> Commercial break. Listen, I guess I said discouraged and depressed. <laughs> Siri said, "Let me help you," <laughs> and gave me some numbers on the screen for help. <laughs> Have mercy. Oh, that was a good one. All right. So, so once again, David could have given up. David could have been discouraged. David could have been depressed. David could have lashed out. David could have did something stupid. David could have what? Blamed God. David could be mad at God. David could walk from God. David could do everything under the sun. But remember this. I said to you, trash talking can make some people motivated in what? Competitive situations. If deployed correctly, trash talking give you the upper hand in what? Certain situations. So let's look at David in 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 6. Look at the rest of the verse. David says this. Now David was greatly distressed. We see his emotional state. Why? Because his people spoke of stoning him. Because the soul of all the people was greed. Every man for a sons and daughter but David the Bible says encourage himself in the Lord see you don't understand what that means so so David now nobody's around David to encourage him nobody's there to say David you can do it David had every right if he wanted to to give up because it's like everything he's tried to do is going against him everything he wanted to do has gone against him the positive he tried to do has turned to a negative you ever been that way in a situation that everything you try to do it seemed to turn out wrong and it continues to be wrong. Everything you try to do right, it comes out wrong. Every time you try to get your best, it becomes your worst. This is David right now. But David start what? Encouraging himself in the Lord. Let me tell you this way. I believe that David starts spiritually trash talking himself to get him back to where he needs to be. Why? Because David knew to whom he belonged. David knew what God can do and what God has done. How do I know? Go over to 1 Samuel chapter 17. I'm going to show you something. Go over to 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 33. Under understand this when you get down and out when you get distressed when you start struggling you got to figure out a way to encourage yourself too often we look to other people too often we worry about this and that too often we are way over there instead of allowing ourselves to what trash talk ourselves back into it now I can tell you this there have been times when when I've been in situations where I play games and and I'm down and and I'm about to lose the game especially when I was in high school with players taller than me I start I start trash talking, not for them, but for me. You better than that. You can do this. Play harder. Be stronger. Don't let them get the best of you. Don't let them knock you down again. Be strong. Stand your ground. Move. Why don't we do that when we get discouraged? Why don't we do things like that when things not going right? 
Why do we allow ourselves to get down right and then laying under the bed somewhere and we can't move or we can't do anything? We, we just... Uh. But look at David. See, David understood in verse 33 of, of first, first Samuel 17. He understood. First Samuel chapter 17, verse 33. And Saul said to David, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are a youth and he a man of war from his youth. So, this, so he's simply telling him what? David, this ain't your battle, homie. You can't handle this. This is for men. Right? This not your game to play. It's like when shorties try to play with grown men. They say, man, you, you can't compete with this. It's like when you know you got an amateur spade player. Just talk to me, somebody. You can tell you got an amateur spade player because they don't know how to bid on their books. Somebody need to talk to me right now. They don't, know, they don't know how to bid correctly. So you already know that you have a what? You already have a what? An amateur so by knowing you have an amateur, then what does that mean? It means that what? You need to do what? Take advantage of them. You might run a Boston on them because they don't really know how to what? To play the game. And because they don't know how to play the game, you can take advantage of them. So when the devil knows that you don't know how to play this game, he'll take advantage of you all the time through people, places, things, and objects. See, you Negroes don't know how to play the spiritual game. This game is the, the, the big joker when he only the little joker. Now, I'm not going to even, I'm not gonna even go, go, go any further than that. I'm not going to go no further than that because then I, I'll take you somewhere. I don't need to go right now. You'd be ready to play spades right now. Verse 36 says this. I'm going to preach that the game of spade in Christianity. Come on now. It ain't rook, Daph. We ain't playing no rook. This spades. All right. First Samuel 17, he says, you none but a, but, a, but a little boy. Verse 36 says this. He said, okay, spiritual trash. He said, but, but check me one too. He says, your servant has killed both lion and bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them. Seeing he has defiled the armies of the what? Living God. Moreover, David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he would deliver me from the hand of this what? Philistine. That brother is talking trash spiritually. He says, even though I'm a youth, even though I'm a youth, let me tell you what I've done. I've done some things like a man. I've killed a lion and a bear and a tiger. Oh, my. He says, even though I'm young, God has delivered me from the hand of the paw of the lion, from that of the bear. And he most certainly will deliver me from what? This Philistine. He's spiritually what? Talking trash. He's spiritually saying, Lord, you're my backbone. Lord, you're my back support. Lord, you got me. He goes on to say in verse 45. Listen to it in verse 45. The Bible says, spear. Shield, looking ruddy, looking straight hood. Here's David, the church boy, with penny loafers on and pennies in his shoes. Coming with his Bible and spirit of prophecy, veggie eating. And now he's about to face this hood, dude. This gangster. The boy type roughneck. But for he's talking to the enemy. He says, you come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the, this going. You got to talk using the Lord's language. 46 says, this day the Lord will deliver me. You, this day the Lord will deliver you into my hand. And I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth. That all the earth may know that there is a God of, in Israel. 47 says, then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with the sword and the spear. For the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into, into my hand. Tell me David not trash talking right there. Tell me not spirit. He says, I, I got some for you. It ain't me, it's God. He said, on this day, he going to give me your head. Now, you can imagine that Goliath now is upset. The brother's pissed off. He's probably even madder. He's more mad than he was before. Now he's going to kill this little young dude. 
but he's spiritually talking. See, you got to learn how to spiritually talk the devil. And even though he's coming at you hard, and even though it's like he got everything against you, you got to look at that big giant and say, in the name of the Lord. See, see, somebody not with me right now. See, so you got to understand, see, when things get thick, you got to start spiritually trash talking yourself to get you back together. You got to understand that you are somebody and you belong to someone that you, and listen to me now, and you got to keep this in your head and know that I'm not down for long. I'm going to be up. See, see, you got to know this. See, this is what the Bible says in Proverbs that I'm the head, not the tail. Excuse me, in Deuteronomy, he says I'm the head and not the tail. You got to know that in 27, it says that the Lord is my life and my salvation. In whom shall I fear? You got to learn to spiritually trash talk the enemy to get yourself back where you need to be. You need to understand that in Psalm 46, it says that God is my refuge and he is my strength, a very present help in trouble. You got to understand that in Jeremiah 29, he says that God has no plans to destroy me, no plans of evil, but to give me a hope and a future. You got to understand that in 2 Timothy chapter 1, God says God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. You got to learn, y'all, to spiritually talk yourself back to where you need to be with God. And too often, we scared to spiritually talk trash to the enemy. Why? I don't know. But what I do know is God says I can back it up when you call it in my name. Why? Because Zechariah tells me that the battle is not mine. It's the Lord. Philippians 4 says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Ezra 10 says rise, take courage, and do it. You got to learn to talk trash spiritually. You can't talk secular trash to the devil. You can't come with some old foolishness you got to talk word see jesus said in matthew chapter 4 that little man doesn't live by bread alone but by every word from the from the word of god you got to learn that you got to talk trash to the devil he can't get you see you can't have one of my one of my tenants this year you can't have spiritual stability if you can't talk no spiritual trash See, the Bible is full of spiritual trash from the Lord. How do I know? Because in Genesis 3.15, he tells the devil what he's going to do to him years later. He says, listen, he says it years later, but he says it then. He says he may, he may, he may get my heel, but I'm going to crush his head. That's trash talking. See, you ain't know you serve a God that trash talk, y'all. You ain't hear what I said. We serve a God that trash talk, and God's trash talk is prophetic. It may be here but it's for later as well see God trash talk in Roman in Revelation 7 when they say who are these folk that's trash talk he said these are they these are they who've made it through trials and tribulations see the Bible is full of trash talk spiritual trash talk that is because God can take that thing out recycle it and bring it right back and say it again why because he can do it he's all about it as 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 he would say as, as my man would say down in New Orleans he's about it about it you got to learn how to be about it, about it with God. And stop allowing the enemy get you down. Why? Because in Ephesians 6, he says, I must be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. In Hebrews 13, he tells me that I will never leave you nor forsake you. That lo, I'm with you always in Matthew 28. Understand that God got me. And you got to learn how to talk your way out of that thing, y'all. Instead of, listen to me now, instead of being bruised by the enemy and being down by the enemy and allowing the enemy to just take control. When you get discouraged, recite some promises. Now you spiritually trash talk. You feel beat up? Start reciting some promises. Listen, there are songs that can get us through. Listen, sometimes when I get down, I start singing a song on my own note. I don't have to be no... Uh, I just started blaring out, especially in a book called Voice, Speech, and Song when Ellen White says that singing will beat back the enemy. See, so you got to understand the thing that beats back the enemy is scripture. The thing that beats back the enemy is a soul that has faith. The thing that beats back the enemy is a soul that believes in the promises of God. And can recite those promises. See, see, David encouraged himself in the Lord when nobody else was around. He didn't need the preacher. He didn't need a singer. He didn't need an elder or a deacon. All he needed to do was to remember what God has done and talk himself out of his situation. Too often we don't do that. Too often we act like we're scared to do that. You got to trash talk the enemy. Listen to me now. You can't trash talk if you don't believe it. You can't trash talk if you don't believe it. If you can't believe that God's going to deliver you, then shut your mouth. If you can't believe that God's going to help you escape, then don't say it. 
Because all the enemy going to do, he going to play you like an amateur spade player, put rings around you, make it even more discouraged. So you got to know that only God can make a way. You can't talk trash and you can't take it out. So when you get tested, you got to be able to follow it. See, see, let me tell you something. First Samuel chapter 30, verse 8 through 10. Listen to me. This is the result of David trash talking spiritually. Look at the result in First Samuel chapter 8. First Samuel chapter 30, verse 8. Look at the result. The Bible says this. Look at the result. So David, David inquired of the Lord. David inquired of the Lord. And as he inquired of the Lord, saying, shall I pursue this truth? Shall I overtake them? Shall I pursue this truth? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, God answered him, pursue, for you shall surely overtake them. And without fail, recover all. Well, I like that. I like that right there. The Bible says you shall surely overtake them and recover all. Listen to me now. He said you shall surely overtake them. And as you surely overtake him, why did it happen? It happened because David did what? What did David do? David spiritually trash talked. The Bible says that David encouraged himself in the Lord. He encouraged himself in the Lord. The Bible says, so David went, he and the 600 men who were with him, and came to the brook Basar where those stayed who were left behind. But David pursued he and 400 men, for 200 stayed behind who were so weary that they could not cross the brook. Listen to me now. David, David pursued the enemy. As the enemy was coming after him, he pursued him. David didn't spend time staying where he was. David didn't spend time being how he was. David did not spend any time wallowing in his own mess. He didn't spend any time being depressed. He didn't spend any time being discouraged. He didn't spend any time, any time being down about it. But David, Brother Marlon, he inquired of the Lord. He prayed. By the time you get to verse 17 of the Bible, the Bible says this. Then David attacked them from twilight until the evening of the next day. Not a man of them escaped except 400 young men who rode on camels and fled. So David recovered. David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away. And David rescued his two wives. Verse 19 says... And nothing of theirs was lacking, and neither small or great, sons or daughter, spoil or anything which they had taken from them. David recovered all. It reminds me of the promise of Joel 2, 25 and 26. Understand this. The Bible says in Joel 2, 20, 25 and 6, he says, So I'll restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locust, the consuming locust and the chewing locust, my great army which I sent among you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be put to shame. Understand, God says, I'm going to give you back what's been taken. I'm going to restore the years. You don't, have to spend, you don't have to spend time being down. You don't have to spend time being down and out. What you need to spend time doing is spiritually trash talking the devil and say, not today. I'm not going to be there. I'm more than what you say I am. It's like a man or a woman verbally abusing somebody to kill their self-esteem. Understand that it's not about that. You can't let nobody keep you down and keep you low. No matter what they say, you're more than that. You say, I'm a child of the king. Victory is mine. 
And when you start saying these things to yourself and believing in the promises, there's nothing the devil can do to you. He going to throw this at you. He going to throw that at you. He going to come this way and that way. But you're going to be able to stand your ground and sing your song. And in, in, in Exodus 14, the Bible says, stand still, fear not, and watch the, the Lord work the salvation out for you. Understand, when you start talking trash, enemy can't help it. He can't handle it, I should say. When you start talking trash, he can't handle you quoting scriptures. That's why when Jesus was talking to him, he couldn't handle it. There's nothing he did to Jesus that can affect Jesus. When he stand before Pilate, and Pilate told him, I have the ability to take your life. Christ started talking trash, spiritually. It's nothing you can do that my father won't let you do. When they came to get him in the Garden of Gethsemane, and Peter cut off Malachi's ear, and, and, and Christ simply says that the battle is not going to be won with the sword. Those who live by the sword will die by the sword. And he says, don't you know that I can call legions of angels to rescue me? That's talking trash. That's meekness, but it's talking spiritual trash. When you know what you got, we serve a God who can speak it and it's done. We serve a God who can say it is already ready. We serve a God who can just touch the ear of a lame and they can hear. He can help the blind see, the lame walk. We serve a God who can protect us. One angel took out 100,000 some men. We serve that kind of God. That's what you got in your, in your arsenal. But you got to know the word. You got to believe the word. You got to start living the word so that when the enemy comes at you, you can look up to him. Say, yeah, you may have me now, Goliath, but I'm going to have your head later. Why? Because the Lord is going to deliver me. You got to learn how to spiritually talk some trash. Spiritually talk some trash so that the enemy won't continue to beat you down. Anointing Fall on me Anointing Fall on me Let the power of the Holy Ghost Fall on me my hands, yes. my mouth and my heart, feel my life, Lord, every part, let the power of the whole
Would you follow me? So I can do your will, Lord. Anointing. Oh, I need your power. I need your direction. And the power. Anointing fall on me. What's the purpose of the anointing falling? So that I can have power. Power to believe. Power to change. Power to conquer. Power to overcome. Power to stand still. Power to watch the salvation of the Lord. Power to talk trash to the enemy spiritually by using spiritual words. I need the anointing to fall on me. Come on, y'all. Sing that chorus one more time. Anointing fall on me. Anointing. Ask for it today. So many of us are so weak spiritually. And all that's going on, y'all, there are 20,000 National Guard troops in Washington, D.C. for next Wednesday. It is not that many troops overseas right now. But in America, there are 20,000 National Guard troops in, in the capital. What makes you think this thing is going to get easier? You have to be spiritually strong now. You got to start building your strip, spiritual strength now. That's why we preaching and teaching these things. So we need the anointing to fall on us so we won't get scared, so we won't get discouraged, so we won't be depressed and down and out. Why? Because God has talked that trash and said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, chapter 4, verse 16, that I'm coming. I'm going to crack the sky. I got a loud trumpet. I'm bringing all the angels with me. Heaven will be silent for the space of a half an hour, Revelation 8. He said, I'm bringing everything to come get you, but you got to be strong. You got to be stable. And you got to be able to look up and know where your redemption draws nigh from. So you, you don't have time to keep being down. You don't have time to let people get you bruised and beaten and trodden about. You got to learn to stand. Stand on the promises. Stand on his word. Stand on the belief that I can do all things through Christ. That great is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Greatness is coming. But you got to stand. You got to stand. And we need the anointing to fall down. Just one more time. Just one more time to encourage somebody. Ask us what they sing. Come on, anointing. Today's your day. Today's your opportunity. Today's your time to spiritually learn how to talk trash. This is the greatest book that was written about beating an enemy. Right here. 
Anything you need to know, right here. Anytime you get beat up, come right here. Anytime you get bruised, right here. Anytime you feel discouraged, right here. Anytime you feel down and out, right here. Anytime you need help, right here. Right here. Right here. This book right here will get you through it. This book is an this book is an instruction manual to how to beat the devil down, how to stay strong in, in the Lord, and how to know to be ready when he comes. It's all in here. There's nothing in here that is not there that won't help you get there. Stop worrying about the folly of other stuff, but focus right here, right here. Put it in here. So when you get down, you can start saying who you are and to what you belong. So today, my appeal to you is this. Make this your desire. Make this your everyday desire to know him for yourself. So that when things come, as the song from Donna McCulkin says, you can just stand. Understand, God has you. Right here. Father in heaven, we thank you. The opportunity we have. We ask, Lord, that you would help us in the quest of what we are trying to do for you. To stand strong until the end. So bless us, Lord. Help each one of us to make a concerted, con concentrated decision to serve you. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to thank you again for joining us, for being with us today. Remember, at 4 o'clock today is our Sabbath snack at 4 o'clock, Central Center time. And, and usually they sing out, but because we have some video issues, we're going to play this video to my mother's contrib contribute again. And so until we meet again, whether at 4 o'clock today, whether it's on Wednesday for Reboot, whether it's on Friday for Friday Night Live or next Sabbath, stand strong in the Lord and the power of his might. This is Pastor Jackson and the New Covenant Church signing off from Memphis, Tennessee. Play this video. Hey, Mom, we put this special little video together just for you. Words cannot explain or describe how special you are to us. And so we just thought we'd put something here just to let you know that we think 75 is a magnificent number. It's a blessing to grow old, to grow old with your children and your grandchildren and friends and those you have affected. So please, please look at this short little video as just a small appreciation of who you are, what you mean to us, and how you have affected our lives. We love you.
Mama J. Happy birthday. This is Courtney, my daughter. Happy birthday, Miss Jane. And Little Day. How you doing, Miss Jackson? It is my fault totally. You don't see them until they grown. But anywho, we are just happy to hear that it is your 75th birthday. So happy birthday. Enjoy yourself. Happy birthday. Yes, that was a great time. Yeah. Miss J, I just wanted to say I love you. Your third son. Happy 75th birthday. Just want to thank you for always allowing me to be part of your life, part of your family, and also being another mother to me. I miss you since you guys moved. Just want to say, from the bottom of my heart, you are one of the greatest people to be in my life, and I love you tremendously. Happy birthday. Hey, Mama Johnny. Hey, Mama Johnny. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. We miss you. It's been a long time since we've seen you, woman, but uh, we are so thankful that the Lord continues to bless you and has blessed you with another year of life. And we just pray that you enjoy your special day and that you enjoy this holiday weekend. We will make it down to Memphis soon and very soon to be able to see you. So again, happy birthday. We love you. We love you. Take care and we will talk to you soon. God bless. Happy birthday, Mama. We love you. Hey, Mama Johnny, I just came on here to wish you the happiest birthday ever. I hope that it is a great one and that you're able to spend it with the people you love doing the things that you love the most. i um, so glad that God placed you in my life. Love you and happy birthday. How's everybody doing? Happy birthday to my beloved grandma, Mama Johnny. I want to send my love and your favorite destruction. Parents, I know most kids. Just wanted to wish you a happy birthday and send my love, even though you're at a great distance. My love for you has not changed, and I still love you dearly. And I want to wish you a happy birthday. And also, to this Friday, I just want to wish you a happy Saturday. Love you, and God bless you. Deuces, y'all. Peace. Hey, Mama Johnny, happy 75th birthday. Hope you enjoyed your day. Love you, your grandson, Kobe. Hey, Mama Johnny, happy birthday, special lady. Just want to wish you a happy birthday, wish you the best. I want to let you know that I love and appreciate you, even though I'm sure you do know that. But just know that I'm thankful for you. I am thankful for the fact that you are my grandmother. And more important, that I have somebody special and caring and kind-hearted and loving as you are in my life. Thank you for everything that you have done for me, both seen and unseen. And more importantly, you always be in there for me and always having my back ever since I was little. So happy birthday, happy 75th birthday at that. Thank you for sharing it with me and thank you for always being a part of my life. I love you and happy birthday again. Hey mom, I just want to say happy birthday to you. Happy 75th birthday, a matter of fact. But most importantly, I want to let you know you've been my mother for 55 years and you have never let me down. I don't regret not one bit of it. I love you and I hope you are blessed with maybe, what, 25 more? Maybe. But guess what? Somebody else want to say something to you. Mama J, happy uh, birthday. Uh, so glad I can be here for that for you and me because I missed you. And just had to see you on this blessed day for you. Happy birthday. Peace. Hi, I'm Corey. Hi, I'm Janet. And we are the, the Jacksons. Jacksons. Mama, we just want to tell you happy birthday. 75 years, 75 golden years. Listen, the Bible says that man has promised three score and ten to 70 years. God has given you 75 years. And we are so thankful for your presence, thankful for your hugs, your kisses, the cooking, and most of all, when you would give me money. Yeah. <laughs> but since those days are over and it's reversed, we just wanted to send you this video birthday greeting to tell you again what? Happy birthday. 75th birthday. And we love you, we adore you, and we thank God for you. So God bless you. God keep you. And just know from the Jacksons. We love you. 
happy birthday. Well, Mama, hope you enjoyed it. Hope it brought some tears to your eyes. Just a small segment of our appreciation for you. And thanking the Lord for 75 years of life. We thank him. You've always been instrumental in our lives. You've always been there for us. You've always given your all. You've always sacrificed. And this is a small piece of thank you for that. You are loved not just by us, but by church members, church family members, I should say, who you've connected with from the churches here in Memphis to Detroit and even Grand Rapids to family members who live in Chicago and Mississippi, to friends who are in Chicago and Mississippi, you are well-loved, 75-year-old woman. And we just want to say how much we love you. So from our hearts to you, we hope that we have touched your life as you've touched ours. So James and I are very appreciative for you. Dwight, as well, who's here. Robert, who wanted me to give you a shout out on birthday. Your daughter, Janet, Anna, the grandkids. April, Paris, JJ, Tennille, Sierra, CJ, Malcolm, Samaje, Isaiah, Kobe, Brooklyn, Autumn, Emmanuel, Johnny, I believe I said to Neil, but I don't want to leave anybody out. So all of, all of, from all of them to you. Uh, love you, Johnny May. Mama J. Mama.